Hey, how's it going? Haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back to another episode of UMass Yak Back. We've got a lot for you tonight. We're going to be talking about the Duffer Brothers, creators of Stranger Things. They're in some uh, controversy. There's some allegations, so we're going to talk about that. Then we're going to be having a debate about what the best Harry Potter movie is. You're not going to want to miss it. It gets a bit heated. And lastly, yes, lastly, we are going to be talking about the end of the world. And you're definitely not going to want to miss that. You're going to want to know how to survive, and we're going to tell you how to. So get comfortable, grab your popcorn, and stick around for the single greatest episode of UMass Yakback that there has ever been. So uh, there's a popular television show on Netflix. It uh, goes by the name of Stranger Things. We all, most people adore it here. We do, of course. We've talked about it before on this show. But uh, recently, there's been some allegations against the creators of the show, the Duffer Brothers. Uh, a man by the name of Charlie Kesser claims that he pitched the idea for the show to them and that they then moved on and stole that, stole that idea from him and created the show for themselves. With me to talk about this is Sharon and Sean. So uh, you guys both have seen Stranger Things and you like the show and I'm sure had a high opinion of the Duffer Brothers. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what do you first, what's your first reaction when you hear this accusation? Uh, my first reaction was, oh shit, not again. Cause like we had, we had so many directors that are kind of under, under a lot of, um, under a lot of trouble. And we, and I kind of thought the Duffer Brothers were like, you know, the actual good people who like start off at, like just to, like new directors and have a really clean slate. But then um, recently they've had like some pretty bad news about them, such as forcing one of the actresses to do her first kiss on set, as well as the female um, crew member who was accusing them of being violent and just being abusive towards the crew members. So, kind of disappointed. Right, and I think that brings up a question of, should we consider these things, these negative things about people, should we keep that in our minds when we're viewing their product? So, should how someone is at home affect how we view their creations, Sean? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a hard question, the separation between artists and their work. I would say at least... In like Stranger Things case, you could be like, oh, I mean, you see it a lot with actors or like people who are like in the public eye. It's like they're creating the show, so it's not like they're starring in it. So I guess it might be easier for some viewers to be like, oh, I mean, it shouldn't, but it's like, oh, they make the show, but at least it's not affecting what you're seeing on screen as far as the performances. It's not like any of the older members of the cast have been accused of anything. Right, right, and it should also be noted that with people like the Duffer Brothers and anyone in the public spotlight, we usually only hear about the bad things that happen, right? We don't hear about all, one, if they slip up one time, it gets in the news, not all their kindness. If it, there is any, I'm not taking any sides here, but we should just keep that in mind. Uh, so moving back to uh, these accusations, the Duffer Brothers lawyer has said that these claims are completely false and that, uh, that they don't even know this Charlie Kesser guy. They've never had any association with him. So it's sort of a he said, she said situation. In situations like that, do you guys feel that you're taking the side of, like subconsciously, are you, are you taking a side here? Well, um, I mean, it could be like people who see the headlines and who sees the news, that's their first initial reaction to actually believe in it. But it's, um, it does depend on the person, like who is actually, who is actually truthful here? Like who, like who do you feel, like do you feel biased towards the Duffer Brothers or not? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, it, it does seem like, especially mostly in the like pop culture industry, they're sort of a uh, guilty until proven innocent attitude. I don't know if you guys would agree with that, but. No, I would say that definitely. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I think Me Too was kind of the, it kind of really exemplifies that. Because, mm. I mean, there's been some very serious accusations also. Some of them um, have been proven, like, truthful. And you want to you want to believe yeah no it's all, a, it's all the accusers a tough situation right you want to just you don't want to victim blame you want to take the victim side but at the same time sometimes like the evidence seems contradictory it doesn't seem to be a lot there and yeah. it does become that he said she said no you're absolutely it. right it's a it's a tough spot uh, so let's uh, just for a moment here let's assume that the Duffer brothers did steal this idea. Do you think that the, the idea makes the show, or do you think that it's more about execution and follow through? Ooh. That's a little bit of both, actually, because the idea is what sprouts out to make a good story, to make a good Netflix series. How they execute it, then that's totally good prop, props for them to actually know how to direct and pick their cast and set up the theme, an 80s theme. Yeah. That's actually the director's own talent. But for the idea, it ha the director's job is also, is also to show some originality and ideas. Yeah, and I would also say, I mean, personally, I have not seen um, whatever they're being accused of having plagiarized. Mm. But I mean, the show itself is very heavy on the, like, the 80s nostalgia. They're taking a lot from Spielberg and like other directors. I mean, Ridley Scott, like Alien, just kind of the monster, and then you have the the Goonies and the Stephen King kind of thing with the kids. So yeah. I mean, they have a lot of influences besides just what they're being accused of taking. It's not necessarily stealing in those cases because the show is kind of intended as an homage yeah. to works that have been beloved in the past. Certainly. So. Certainly. Well, uh, we'll just have to wait to see where this story goes. But I think regardless, uh, you can't deny that the Duffer brothers have produced and directed a great show, regardless of whether it's their idea or not. Uh, stick around, guys. We're going to be back soon with the next topic, and you're not going to want to miss it. Well, everyone, UMass Yakback is coming back at you with another heated debate from uh, our two debaters, Sean and Jake. Today, we are going to be debating with what the best Harry Potter film is, and we've got some real Potter heads here. Uh, they're just the biggest fans of the series and the books and all that. So uh, let's just get right into it. Who wants to speak first as to what the best Harry mm. Potter movie is? I'd like to go first. Go ahead. I think the best Harry Potter movie is uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, number four. Damn. I think that's the best one. It's pretty fiery. What are you going to say? I was thinking, I was, see, I'm a little conflicted because, like, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, but also Azkaban. I, I mean, Incarceration, it's, it's still pretty relevant today. Incarceration, oh, yeah. As when yeah. J.K. Rowling, like, wrote about it. No, yeah, you that, know the Dementors just flying. It's like a political everywhere. statement almost. It, it almost is. How deep do you think the the political statements go, and what can we take from Harry Potter and apply to our own world? Well, I mean, I think our world has seen our recent recursions in like Sado, Fifty Shades of Grey stuff, and I mean there was that tree, okay. that Whomping Willow. It was just whipping cars left and right. Uh, Whipping. So you're saying there's sexual themes in the? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's that. Let's say Harry Potter. Yeah. Come on. My apologies to the audience. No, this is a very. Ah. Whomping Willow is in is in Harry Potter episode two, by the way. I guess I guess he also makes an appearance in episode three, but we first introduced to him. Yeah. In number in number two. Him. The willow. The willow was Whomping. Him. What would you? What would you say? I'm not going to assume any gender for the Whomping Willow. I don't know, man. Whomping Willow? I'm just... These Harry Potter assumptions got to stop. True. Uh, okay, so wait. What's not your favorite all snitches movie? Yeah, what's be, your, what's not, your favorite? not all snitches can be gold. True. But what? which one is your favorite movie? My favorite movie is probably... Um, I mean, no, it, no, would, have, it would have to be The Order of the Phoenix, right? Five. Correct? That, yeah. 
That is how numbers work, correct. And now, are you referring to the movies or the books? Because I think they're going to want Movies. Know. It's a way different story if we're talking about books, I'd say. Would you say? Are we talking about... If we're... We are talking, yeah. <laughs> I think we're talking about the movies. We're talking about the movies. Off. If we're talking about the movies, then... Well, let's, uh, let me uh, submerge you guys like deeply into the Potterverse. Uh, if, or which, which Harry Potter character are you? Like, you know those BuzzFeed quizzes? Dumbledore. Dumbledore? Yep. Why? Because he's, he's the best character. He's the smartest wizard, and he has a sweet wand. And he's... He... <laughs> yeah. 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 Sean, how about you? Oh, and also, I don't know, just a little fun fact. Dumbledore is actually, J.K. Rowling said he's, a, he's homosexual. Just a fun tidbit for the people at home. Yeah, but that, that, that part doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't carry over to me. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't suggesting anything. Sean, you can, uh, what, which Harry Potter character are you? Uh, Luna. Love good. Oh. Uh, the love, oh, okay. the love's good. That, I can that see department. that there. She's a little bit of a the, wild card, which. She is a wild card, but, um. Does she? She's not a house elf, you know? <laughs> no. Right? If no. you're trying to imply that she'd be in the house. I didn't. I'm telling you, no, there's, there's some progressive themes going that. on in Harry Potter. True. So I don't, <laughs> I don't want to hear from you, Tyler. There okay? slavery and elves. Hey, but oh, um, well, hey, them, so Dobby that's... does get free, doesn't he? Does he not? He gets freed from life at the very end. Hey, let's tie it back. Hey, remember that rat trapped in that like, man's body? That was the thing that happened. <laughs> How about episode think... four? There's the part with the dragons. Oh, yeah. With the egg. Yep. He has to steal the egg. That yeah. is a, I think that's actually... There I want, I actually, want to be know. an unbiased moderator, but I think that's my favorite movie as well. Actually, my favorite part is when the king comes back. I thought that was really well executed from the books to the movies. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Yeah. I think... Uh, the king. I don't returns. think you're as big as a Harry Potter guy as you say you are. Remember there's a big, there's a big spider? Yeah. The king comes... Okay, there's, there's big spiders. Yeah, but there's yeah. no king in that part. <laughs> there's no king Shit, in man. the Potterverse, I don't think. There's, there's um, life-size chess. There's is chess, that the king right? you're talking about? Oh, is that, that the is king, king you're talking that about? That is a king, right? Yeah, life-size chess, but that's, uh, that's a king, right? totally different movie it's than the, the part board. with the spider. Everything, I thought everything was on the board. <laughs> or, the I thought we were just board. laying it out on the chess board. all over, you know, the Harry Potter. Yeah, that, that, that chess game was a little yeah, my, far-fetched. My boy think. Harry yeah. B. Like, we're talking about Voldemort. We're supposed to be scared <laughs> of him, the, the scariest villain ever. Hey, you ever. just said his name. And he's... Yeah. You exactly. said his name. Can we, uh, you're, the, you're the reason. He who must not no be named anymore. You, uh, well, you, just named him, you so. know who. Yeah. Where was I going with it? Oh, Who's your he, daddy? he's super dangerous. And then what does he set up? Like a chess game to get through. We can, to I think he we can all a agree of fire. that episode one kind of isn't really that good because they're playing chess and, and Ron hops up on the back of one of the human-sized chess pieces mm. when he could have just stayed on the sideline and not gotten hurt. True. The dark odds. But no, they said uh, cinematically they, they set it up. He was playing chess earlier in the movie, so and then we got oh, with that cinema? payoff. What? Like with cinema, utilizing cinema. Right, yeah. but he was, play, he was he could have been playing that chess game from the from side the of the board the whole time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're right. I mean, you have it there. Uh, uh, let you me give you one final question before we uh, end this wonderful topic. Uh, what's better, the books or the movies? Um, the audio book. Okay. Yeah, the audiobooks are probably read by read by. I don't know what he's read by, but he has a hell of a voice. Probably serious, serious black. There was a night bus, and it came in. And remember mm. when Hedwig bit that guy's ear off? <laughs> no, right? I don't actually. Hey, and I feel like one of the major um, lessons of these movies that I I feel like gets overlooked a lot is just don't read some dude's diary. People don't like it when you read their um intimate um conversations with themselves that's yes and i think that is the uh lesson that should be taken away from this segment do not read other people's diaries uh stick around everyone we've got one more segment for you before we end the show see you then This next piece that we have for you, uh, well, we've had a lot of fans lately asking how, how we make these episodes, how things work behind the scenes. Maybe you're interested. Maybe you want to get involved. Well, we're going to break down for you exactly how we make these episodes, exactly what they consist of, how long they take, all those nitty-gritty details you want to hear. And uh, 
Here it is. see you there. Welcome to uh, UVC TV 19 studio. This is UMass Yak back and we're going to show you how things work here today. Okay, come on, come on in, come on in. This, this room, this is the grand meeting room. This is where all our wonderful ideas come into fruition. This back here, a little sneak peek. Excuse oh, me. Oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. He's one of the head honchos here. This back here is where the, the editing magic, the movie magic happens. Boring stuff, who cares about it? This way, this way, this way. This beauty is where our, our uh, episodes are edited and exported on. You can hear it running like an like a maniac. But this, right through this door, this is where the real magic happens. This is the Yak Back Studio. And that's Joey, our producer. Joey, you got anything to say? Uh, uh, they want to know. It's been a, more than a month since I've started producing, and uh, I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> so oh, yeah. <laughs> so join if you want to work for people who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Anyways, this is the this is the set. This is what it looks like. You only see you're only used to seeing me here, but. You know, we got our camera one here, camera one. This captures my, my beautiful face. And over here, we got camera two, and camera two gets, uh, well, the not so beautiful faces that appear on the show. Uh, these are our microphones, our table. We used to have a gourd, but it broke. Uh, I wonder who did that. Yeah, some knucklehead broke that dang gourd. We do the gourd every single time. <laughs> oh. 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 Now come back here and take a look at my desk. See, see where the real stuff happens. Right back here. Here, why don't you pretend like you're part of the, part of the show? Okay. Uh, that's nothing. Don't worry about that. I'm not famous anymore. He hands me my no no cards. I'm not famous uh, anymore. This is what our equipment looks like for all you tech junkies. It's a little thing, you just clip it to your neck or something, and that's, uh, that's that. It captures our lovely serenades. This room's got good harmonics. Um, that's our blue screen, we don't use it. This is a straight wire. Some rusty pipes are up on the ceiling. There's a lot of stuff we don't know how to use, too. Yeah. It's not like we're told or anything, you know? Oh. We kind of just come here. These things right here. Uh, they're just some panels. I don't know what they do or what their purpose is. I guess they're for decoration. Um, this right here is our little piece. You know, it's uh, people get tense in here. We get stressed out. We need to bring nature into into the studio a bit. So we're we're like human beings are are uh, animalistic creatures. So we need to bring our own element back into the fold sometimes. Human beings are, are uh, animalistic creatures back into the fold. Animalistic creatures. Hi, Sean. Do you have anything you want? Okay. Uh, that's about all I can think of. Uh, thank you for watching another Where lovely. Where the f is this extension cord? Thank you for watching another lovely UMass Yak Back Row. We've got everything under control here. And if you want to join, just show up at 5.30 on Thursday. If you're a little late, it's okay, because everyone else is too. Do you want the well, wasn't that a great rove? Another great rove by the gang. Uh, stick around. We're going to have another topic for you right up next. Well, 
everyone. This is a, uh, I'm not going to lie to you, this is a bit of a tough topic for us here because uh, we're facing a bleak reality here. For those of you who don't know, the world is ending April 18th of this year, just, just uh, 13 short days away. The world is ending, and uh, we were first alerted of this uh, disturbance in the world force uh, by a Twitter user. He shared a voicemail that he received on his iPhone. And uh, when you look into this voicemail, I'm not going to get into the specifics. We'll link it. You can, you can go check out the story for yourself. But the voicemail translates to a message that says, danger, danger, SOS, they're not human. And it's suspected that this message is the black box recording from the missing Malaysian Airlines flight. Yeah, so sit down, sit down, take a breather, make your bucket list, check some things off, and listen to us tell you about it. Connor, Jake, and I are going to walk you through these truly terrifying times. So, uh, Connor, you buying any of this? <laughs> Um, I'm, I don't know if buying any of it is the right word. I'm definitely intrigued by it. What, what does it say? It said it's coming from the, or it's from the black box, which is like the, the camera recording? Uh, the black box is a, it's a audio recording device in every plane and it just records the cockpit. So let, let me, let me get a little more into detail just for you at home who are probably wondering what the heck's going on right now. So a Twitter user gets the mysterious voicemail he tweets about it, people decode it, then he starts getting messages from these uh, di various Twitter accounts in a different, a foreign language saying, take down the, take down the uh, post, take down the shares and everything. And uh, from there, it just spiraled out of control with a bunch of people joining in, a bunch of people finding new clues to this that invoke uh, aliens, Stephen Hawking and his death and it just gets really out of control. We can't possibly cover it all in this segment. But, uh, you know, we've, this isn't the first time we've seen these end of the world scenarios. We, there's, since, uh, since 2000, there have been eight times that the world has been supposed to end, and that's just talking about the major ones. Jake, do you recall any of these past uh, doomsdays? I sure do. I sure remember some of them, especially uh, December, 21st, 2012. Yeah, yeah. I sure it thought that one was going to come true. But this time, I think it's for real. There's a lot really? of evidence. There's really? definitely a few good pieces of evidence this time. So, uh, yeah, I think. Did it, now, you read the, you read the, twi the tweet thread. Mm -hmm. Did anything jump out to you as, like, really uh, sending a shiver down your spine? Sure. Uh, for one, the Malaysian air flight. Because what the hell happened to that? Mm -hmm. You know, just disappeared. Yeah. Abducted by aliens, obviously. Second of all, Stephen Hawking. That guy's really smart. He's got a great brain in his head. Obviously not anymore. It's in the, it's in the ground. Or, but seriously, I think that aliens are probably coming sometime within the next couple of weeks. And they're going to... I don't know if they're going to maybe scary. harvest us. It's maybe uh, War of the World style. War of the World style, yeah. yeah. What happens in that? What do they do? It's Tom Cruise and Dakota Fanning. And the aliens come down and they just like start electrocuting everybody. Electrocuting. Okay. Then they save it in the end. Yeah, then they end up getting. Oh. Yeah, they pull it all back together. Uh, so, uh, uh, I don't think any of us really believe the world's gonna end. But uh, now, a serious question for you guys, though: Do you be do you think that in our lifetime we'll come close to any sort of world-ending event? And if so, what what do you do you see the world ending? And if so, what do you think is the most realistic way that? our world can end. Uh, or have you never thought about it, Connor? You're looking a little... Well, just based on kind of media and stuff right now, I think the fear right now for us is like either climate change or AI, right? That's what everyone's like mm. pulling away from. And a nuclear war, too. Oh, a nu nuclear war, nuclear too. War. That'd be a good one. That would be a very good one. <laughs> Jake, do you have any creative ways well, of how you think the world's going to end? If I'm being honest with you, Tyler, I do think that the aliens are going to come. But if if that doesn't happen, then like honestly, climate change is a good way for the world to end. Not good, but a way it would make sense. I would prefer that, our, that's, uh, that wouldn't be in our lifetime, though, would it? Probably not, but it could be. You never know. Imagine that. Just like 
bunch of storms you've seen the day after tomorrow i like the idea of aliens in a sick in a kind of a fun way right It'd so we, do we believe we believe in aliens here yeah well do you not? I, I do no i do i believe out there somewhere do we have, and now you said you think they're going to come are you saying they're going to come in the next two weeks as this tweet predicted or? yes really well what, what okay. other time would they come this is like the perfect time <laughs> true <laughs> if they're keeping up with uh american social media uh so we believe in aliens you think that the aliens are going to come and they're just going to be gunning for us or what what goal they're they they're have? either going to try to wipe us all out for what re what purpose though? well maybe they like they want our rocks or water or something we have a lot of water rocks, and yeah, water. rocks. so they might try to get us that or maybe they're just like this is a good place for us to civilize if that's the word for it okay colonize colonize yeah, that's yeah, the one yeah. yeah and yeah then they just wipe us all out and then they'll take the earth for their own yeah hmm. just like they did with mars definitely uh well uh that was a pretty uh positive segment that was a real feel-good segment right talking about all the ways that the <laughs> yeah. world could end um but sadly that is all the time that we have for tonight and we're gonna have to call it quits there so thank you everyone for watching and uh, we'll see you next week.